good afternoon and yeah just a little bit grey and grotty out there uh, welcome back to dice and bolts where i take a look at the core dice mechanic of uh, the various different role-playing games that sit on my shelves uh, second video this afternoon i am looking at my newly acquired copy of age of sigmar soulbound from cubicle 7 uh, game this is the officially licensed first ttrpg adaptation of the age of sigmar fantasy miniatures game from games workshop or warhammer no it's still games workshop the shops are called warhammer still games workshop uh, i saw when this was on pre-order and i saw a load i wasn't going to get it because i thought yeah uh, but i do like age of sigmar as a setting more than i like the core warhammer setting the old world it wasn't for me i've got all of the products for wfrp 3e because i like 3e and i like how that works but the actual setting it, yeah, i'm not a, a massive fan of whereas aos is brighter and it's wacky and it is more extreme it's like the same thing just turn up to 12. um it's a beautiful book um it's well worth having a look at uh, it's got a fair amount of law explaining um explains a little bit on the transition from the old world to the mortal realms which the new age of sigmar games goes in i'm not going to dive into aos law because there are people who know more about it than i do but it's great and you play a party of um soulbound characters not all stormcasts uh, i did have a look at an all stormcast uh, party but you lose out on a lot of uh, benefits um and the game itself or the system itself the dice and bolts of it uh runs off a handful of six sided dice i'll just zoom dr dice cam back out a little bit these are the lovely uh daughters of cain um aos dice that i picked up they are beautiful and they do do various different theme bonds because i'm a sucker the only downside is you've got custom call outs on these on both the one and the six um so yeah i think you have to decide before you start playing if you're going to choose the kind of winged snake as the six or the snaky bite boy as the six whichever way around anyway uh dice and bolts of it when you want to achieve a task you assemble a dice pool which is the number of uh d6 is equal to the oh, come on equal to the stat that you're using you take the skill that will add between one and three dice and then you roll them it's a dice pool game so you're after um a difficulty number so every task would give you uh it would say that you want to carry out a a uh, deer a body stroke melee weapons so if you want to hit a creature actually you know, not best example so if you want to um track somebody that will be mind brackets awareness I think it's a tracking skill mind brackets awareness so you'd use your mind so character has a mind of two you have one rank in awareness yeah. and the task would also have its difficulty and complexity the difficulty is what you need to get on the dice and the complexity is zoom that back out a bit more and the complexity is the number of successes you need to um succeed simple as that so quite often a fairly simple task will be a four one so you just need one four or higher i presume snaky boy there is a is a six there's one success or two successes rather if the task was a five two you need fives or sixes and you need two of them that would fail uh if we have some more dice say we've got a higher skill there's two sixes simple and straightforward what is also useful is that as well as having training you can have what's called focus and what focus does it's plus one plus two or plus three the same as training is either one two or three and focus gives you floating pluses that after you've rolled you can add to your dice so say for example if this is the same task but it is a five three so it's quite tricky it's also quite complex it's it's quite difficult but it's also quite complex there's a slight difference in there so we've got those two successes there and nothing else so we failed if we have three focus 
that gives us three individual plus ones that we can add to one, some, or all of the dice. So we can turn one of these twos into a five. And then we've succeeded because although our training hasn't quite been enough because we're focused on it, we've got that extra ability. And that applies to combat as well. So if you have uh, training one and focus one in melee weapons, you gain plus one extra dice. So we want to go, uh, oh, and difficulty in combat. So all of your all characters have got three combat stats, which are um, melee, accuracy, and defense. And those will be on this ladder and the series of dots on the character sheet. So your melee might be good, your accuracy might be poor, and your defense might be good. I think that's the default roughly for, say, a Stormcast character or a fighter character. And there's a table on your character sheet. If you're attacking somebody and your attack skill, either melee or accuracy for melee and ranged, is the same as theirs, then the difficulty on your dice is four. So you need four, five, and six. If your skill is one higher, the difficulty is three. If your skill is two higher, the difficulty is only two, or two or more higher than the difficulty is only two, which means you're only going to get you know, fails on the dice on uh, ones. If your attack skill is one lower, the difficulty on the attack roll becomes a five. If your difficulty is two lower, the difficulty or two or more lower, then the difficulty becomes a six. So say, for example, our Stormcast character. Now, Stormcasts, I think the pre-generated character has five and one focus in melee, uh, is attacking a beast man. I think I, I used orcs as the as the as the common uh enemy in the previous videos it's been quite a while uh so he wants to attack an orc my attack skill is good its defense is uh good so i roll my dice and i'm after four five and six so there's one success i've got one point of focus so i can turn that three into a four give me two successes and generally speaking weapons do damage plus the number of extra successes that you get so a sword does one plus the successes so it's two damage or maybe three yeah total number of successes so there's three damage subtract armor that comes off the toughness nice and easy if that roll was a bit better there's four plus one there's five damage off its armor nice and easy if we are fighting the boss mob and its defense is whatever one above good is excellent i think um you my difficulties are then need fives rather than fours so that would fail but i do have one focus so i can turn that to a five so that's got a way of rescuing things all characters then also get access to um metal uh, one or two points normally i think um that is used to power uh, certain actions and talents that's also used to power miracles so if you're playing um, a blessed character like a devotee of sigmar or whatever you can call down miracles but you spend metal points to activate some of them metal for most characters can be used either to double the number of dice you gain from your training or double the number or before you roll or double the amount of focus that you have after you roll so in this instance we've used that one focus a second focus wouldn't do anything because we were after fives before the roll we could have added an extra dice still wouldn't have helped but it's there and you recover one point of metal at the start of your turn in combat so you can do this time and again time and again you can also spend it to get in an extra action the economy comes in where you're looking at spellcasters who need to spend metal to keep spells going so if you you know cast a spell that gives you magic armor it's one metal at the start of your turn to keep it going for the next turn otherwise you have to recast it um so yeah that's it um pool of six-sided dice which is built up of training and stats there's only three stats body mind and soul which is quite nice and simple straightforward so Pool of six-sided dice, body and stat, 
or stat and skill training um, roll them against a difficulty number you anywhere between two and six and then number of successes would do it and then apply your focus as plus ones to individual dice to bump them to give you successes where you may not have done it and that's the dice and bolts of soulbound age of sigma uh, roll well and i will oh i did crazily have a look and see what it would be they've done an introductory adventure it's a pdf called crash and burn it's a real good adventure it's really quite well written and there's uh, pre-generated characters so i grabbed them down just to have a look and see what you would do with a pre-gen and i thought let's have a look and see how much it would be to get miniatures for each of these these ones because it, the game uses a fairly simple zone based combat so rather than tactical miniatures like 4e and some 5e games do it's like, okay well i'm in this part of the battlefield or that part of the battlefield and it's quite a, a good adaptation i quite like it and i thought oh, it might be quite nice and given that one of the um pre-gen characters is a stormcast knight quester and at the moment they are 25 quid for one plastic uh miniature it's a nice miniature it's a big miniature because it's a stormcast i think the cheapest one that i've seen is the um idoneth wave caller so like a deep sea elf spellcaster and that's 18 pounds so yeah 120 quid or thereabouts for five character miniatures no. i'm hoping cubicle seven will do character pawns you know heavy card stand-ups because they just blow my mind love them Right, there's the dots and bolts of it. Uh, roll well, and I'll see you around.